Alright, so for Kerbal Space Program 2's weekly challenge, I built a air launcher that launches an air launcher to Lathe, and then the air launcher launches something in the air, which goes back to Kerb. Uh, that meets the requirements of a couple goals. And I just thought it would be funny to make like a Russian nesting doll of aircraft and uh, bind them together into this. Now, unfortunately, the main spacecraft, or uh, the initial spacecraft, sorry, I had to use regular rocket engines because jet engines pulled from every single tank which lagged the game to 1 FPS and this caused... well okay so 1 minute of flight time was basically half an hour in real life and I have a lot of patience but not enough patience to sit through hours of a single orbital test. Uh, here I was reverting because I broke a wing and then I break that exact same wing on this attempt, and I was like, whatever, it's stable. So I just keep going. Which, uh, I mean, it worked out in the end. It was pretty stable. We were high enough, high enough up, so it didn't really matter. Now, this was still running pretty darn slow. I think it was around 5 FPS on launch. Um, but we got through it in the end. Just burning sideways, standard orbital stuff right now. And if you look at the top section there, after that little booster phase, we start with the hydrogen engine just activated. And above of that, or I mean inside of that, so there's the capsule on the wave front, like the uh, rocket max size capsule, and then then it's connected like externally to the fuel tank, uh, the the swerve fuel tank, which I thought was a neat design, just having the plane in the middle as like a little cargo section area. Alright, so we've uh, done our <laughs> jewel encounter. Uh, kind of cut a lot of that out. We had a few failed attempts here and there. So my, this is actually a failed attempt as well, now that I think about it. So I decided to use jewel to uh, aero break, and we just dove into the atmosphere a few kilometers. And uh, it actually worked really well. Like, I was, I was astonished with how well it worked. And it looked nice, too. You got the little fluffy clouds. We got a cool shot, too, of us passing really close to our target, which is light. But not exactly getting into the SOI. So we just passed by it. And say hello to our gas giant friend, whose clouds disappear for no apparent reason. Right now. But then they reappear, so I guess it's all good. Turns into KSP-1 jewel for a minute. And then it looks awesome. Uh, now one problem here is the air brake was fine. I was checking out like the drag numbers and all that. It, it's cool, uh, especially this high up. And there's no heating, so that was a really big benefit. That's actually a huge reason why this mission was possible. If you see the end of the video, uh, or if you've seen the video where we went 10 kilometers a second over Kerbin, it's the same clip. So there's no there's no aerodynamic heating to kill. You. Right, so we're just relaxing Jules' upper atmosphere, trying to make as much drag as possible. Just so we can slow down our hyperbolic orbit and actually get into a nice stable. Here you can see it brought it down quite nicely actually on our way back up. But the moment we exit the atmosphere, something really, really annoying happened that happened like 10 times in a row. So I just gave up. I believe someone's called it the Kraken Sphere. And you'll see why in a second. taking a couple of screenshots. Never hurts to have too many. And boom. Instantly dead. The moment we exited Jules' atmosphere, it destroyed the entire craft every single time. No matter what we did. Uh, so I just completely gave up on the Jewel arrow breaking approach, which would have been nice, but you know, we had a better option, which was just go directly to late and arrow break there instead. Uh, in reality, we probably didn't need to aero break, but it, we had 400 meters a second left at the end of the mission. Which, actually, we shouldn't have had. Which is interesting in itself, and I'll explain that once we get there. Yeah, I'm just pointing out all the planets. I like the clockwork of the jewel system. I like how everything moves. And 
and just like that, we're at Leaf. Uh, now I'm just adjusting the trajectory so we actually enter the atmosphere deep enough to slow us down. So for the air brake, we just roll around, try to make as much drag as possible because it likes uh, taking a nice slim profile, which isn't much drag. So I just try to increase the surface area, touching the air, basically. And that slows us down nicely and gets us most of the way into an orbit. I have to burn the engine a bit. Uh, we got some cool sights, though. screenshots. They never hurt. Right, here we're releasing it. Now it would have come out on its own, but we just I just decided it's a time warp and the space retreat. So I mean both ways would have worked. Luckily that's still a feature. And we're out. Now for the riskiest part of the mission. The landing. You'll see, you'll see what happens during the landing itself. So here we do uh, the same maneuver we did earlier, but with just a small plane. And once we slow down enough, we can actually point downwards without spinning around to slow down. And we, the air catches our wings, and we actually put more control. We didn't actually have enough pitch authority, so I deployed the wings a bit. And you can actually use your authority to go over the deployed like degree limit, which is a little tip thing. The plane I built, uh, I never tested it to land. I've, I only tested on a turbine taking off to reach orbit. It's basically an SSTO, but because I had to release in the atmosphere for the challenge, I released in the atmosphere. It's still an air launch vehicle. It counts. Uh, even though I'm a bit late with the video, I think the video is coming out about a day or two after, uh, after the fact. Now here I noticed a weird looking boulder. Uh, it was nothing in the end. So I just passed by it. Little fun fact, uh, this is the third attempt. The other ones crashed instantly, because uh, without engine power, this thing cannot fly at all. It actually falls harder than the space shuttle, I feel like. But, it's a story for another day. Even though this is that story. And mission accomplished, and we just ditch. Basically, the world's most expensive touch and go. Uh, millions of kilometers traveled just to do a little touch and go on another world, and then go right back. An amazing mission plan, and we don't even spend any time. With it. We just leave. We go right for it, back to orbit. Here is uh, the little deploy wing trick.
Alright, now we just do a standard approach to orbit. That's your basic SSTO, except a little bit overpowered. And a uh, nice screeny there to fill up my storage. And then we just uh, speed run into orbit real quick, because we ain't sent through all that. We had a few more pictures there. I don't know if I'll release them or not. I could do like a community tab and put them up there. That might be a decent idea. And now, time for the release. Which is actually extraordinarily clean. Extraordinarily clean. And, it's still in the atmosphere, so it counts as an air launch, doesn't it? We're below 50 kilometers, as you see by me happily circling that number. So it counts. Now all we have to do is bring this thing back home to Kerbin. And we achieve, I think, they call it the Val level goal. Except I air launched an air launcher, so I, I, I'll put myself a little bit above that. The Kerbal level goal? Well, that doesn't make much sense. Well, whatever. Alright, here we're just circularizing our orbit. It doesn't cost much fuel at all, and uh, we also have extra fuel left in orbit from the hydrogen powered stage, which we didn't see too much of. But it helped us get here, and it's going to help us get back a little bit. pictures for my storage to get full faster. Here I discovered maneuver node music, which actually kind of made me like maneuver nodes. So my first plan was to do a Val Tylo gravity assist, but we ended up just doing a single Tylo gravity assist and save us about 800 meters a second, or something like that. The rough, rough numbers here. I think we might have touched Val a little bit, but in the end we still save fuel, so it's okay. And then I just finalize the burn, pretty much shoot straight out of Tylo, and uh, go right to Kerbin from here. We have to do a few minor adjustments in solar orbit, but we get through it. Now, unfortunately, the uh, time to go back to Kerbin was a little bit off. I, I got it wrong, so I had to burn a bit down uh, towards the sun a bit more. We're actually extraordinarily close to the sun, and we get blinded a little bit. But I'm sure he enjoys that, so I let him be. As we time warp back to Kerbin. Uh, so, this is real time, by the way. It's at one time speed, so you can see the planet growing because we're going extraordinarily quickly. This is the same video. Uh, as the 10 kilometers per second video on uh, the channel, if you haven't seen it. So it's the same clip. <laughs> it's just insane how it works. We, um, we graze just over the north pole of the planet. Like, I set the periapsis to like a kilometer or something like that. And we just let it go. And it looks like we're gonna hit, too, on the time warp, but I know we're gonna miss. Just by a, by a hair. Because we needed all of the runway we could get, basically, to slow down in time. And we also fired up the engines just to help a little bit. He got knocked out in the middle of flight. Uh, the G-loading was so high, he decided to take a nap for the first time in six years. Can't blame him. And then he starts freaking out and starts mashing all the buttons in the cockpit. I love this animation, it's cool. And 
another example of the game's beauty. There I paused the game because I was worried the parachutes weren't coming out, but they opened a thousand feet over ground level. Or, uh, sorry, meters over ground level. I just didn't know that. And from here it's your standard descent down. Uh, that ends the mission right there. Air launcher to Lathen. Or, no. Air launching an air launcher to Lathen back. But the air launcher doesn't get launched back. The air launcher launches something that comes back to Kirby. Which is the vow level goal. So, we accomplished something to say. We're all Kirby time. If you like the video, make sure you like the uh, actual video, like through the YouTube platform. It helps out the channel greatly because it helps promote my content. And if you liked it, maybe other nerds will like it, and then we can get really smart people in the comments to uh, tell me exactly what I'm doing wrong, and that's better for everyone because that lets me make better videos for you guys. And if you do want to see more and join the community, I do have a Discord. I'll put that in the description. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the Kerbal Chris YouTube channel because then you'll never miss out on any awesome uploads like this one. Or maybe even cooler ones, like gravitational rings or something.